In this video, I'll do a review and tear down of this 48 volt golf cart battery from BigBattery.com. This battery was provided to me by BigBattery.com, so in fact, it is a sponsored product. However, I would try to be open-minded and fair as much as possible. So even though it's a sponsored product, I will do this review just like any other product reviews I've done on this channel. So previously, Eric Lundgren reached out to me and asked me if I could do a review and find other cool things I could do with this battery and I gladly accepted the challenge. So besides a regular review and tear down this battery, I will also show you a few other ways you can do with this battery besides putting it on a golf cart. First of all, let's take a look at this battery. It is a 48 volt lithium ion golf cart battery that's called Beaver or BEVR. It has a capacity of 500 watt hour or about 11 amp hour. This is a regular lithium ion nickel manganese cobalt battery or NMC for short. That means you can charge it up to 4.2 volts per cell, but to prolong the battery life, it's best to charge it to just 4.1 volts per cell or 49.2 volts for the pack. There's a DC disconnect switch on the side of the battery and it will allow you to turn on and off the battery. There's also a voltage display so when you turn it on it will show the voltage of the battery. Right now the battery is about 49 volts so if you divide that by 12 you get about 4.1 volts per cell so the battery is fully charged. On the other side we've got the output connector. This is called the Anderson SB50 connector. As the name implies, it can support output up to 50 amps. I was also supplied with a connecting cable with an Anderson SB50 connector on one side and ring terminals on the other side. This is for connecting the battery to your golf cart. This is a very thick cable so it can easily handle 50 amps continuous current from the battery. Now let's check on the accuracy of the voltage display. I have hooked up the power cable in the back here to my meter and let's turn it on you can double check the voltage display so here it says 49.1.1.2 so 49.1 volt on the display and on my meter 49.7 so it's a little bit over half a volt lower than the actual voltage so I can confirm it with another meter here 49.72 half a volt over 49 volts about one percent tolerance not a significant number but uh, something you should keep in mind now let's see how much the battery weighs about 20 pounds dimensions of the battery 12 inches long 7 inches wide and about five and a half inches tall so another question you might ask is how do you charge this battery so inside this battery there's already a bms so you just hook it up to a 50 volt power supply and it should charge this battery i have a 60 volt variable power supply so i can charge this battery at 50 volts so i already hooked up everything here with my amp meter All right so I set it up to 50 about 51 volts and uh, the switch is off right this voltage comes from here it's not the battery voltage now if I turn it on you can see my amp meter so zero All right so if I turn on the battery the fan is louder now, so it's charging the battery right now at 0.14 amp. So I can increase the current. It's at 1 amp right now, so I can confirm with my meter it's at 1 amp. And it's charging the battery at 1 amp. Now my charger can do a maximum of 3 amp of current so let's try and increase it to 3 amp Three point two. 
that's the maximum current this thing can provide so we can confirm here 3.3 amp is charging the battery you can see the battery voltage is increasing so I was not supplied with a charger to charge this battery so this is one way to charge the battery and this is 11 amp hour capacity this is 3 amp max so it will take about three and a half hours to fully charge this battery with this uh, variable power supply bigbattery.com also sells their fast charger for this battery which is a 15 amp charger this battery is 11 amp hour so we'll charge this battery in under one hour but with my power supply here it takes almost four hours to fully charge the battery so next I'm gonna disassemble the battery and show you what's inside there's a warranty label here and I'm gonna have to cut it in order to disassemble the case so keep in mind that if you do this you're gonna avoid the warranty so here is the inside of the battery with the top cover off so we got a BMS this cable has 13 wires so that's for sure the battery is 12S we got a disconnect switch here so this wire goes from battery to this switch and it goes out to this connector here so when you turn it on you provide power to this connector so here's the inside of the battery pack and first let me show you the small cable that black and red cable that goes from the outside so this cable here goes inside of battery and that is the cable for the voltage display we got two main battery terminals connected to number eight wires that goes to the top part of the battery and we have the balance wire that's connected to this board here which connects to another connector that has more than 13 pins I think it has about 17 or 18 pins the extra pins for the temperature sensor the inside casing of the battery is metal and it's welded together and also the terminals are laser welded together so at this point I cannot go any further to disassemble this pack without using my angle grinder to cut things out but if I take a peek inside underneath the plastic I see a label that says Samsung SDI so these cells are prismatic lithium ion battery cells that are similar to the Samsung prismatic cells that the uh, BMW i3 uses that's what they look like so that is the inside of the battery pack and everything is laser welded together with good quality cells so I would say it's a well built and good quality battery pack in fact I think this battery is a little bit overbuilt the battery is only up to this tall from here up to the top contains all the wiring the insulation and the BMS and the top part is actually a separate metal box that contains the BMS the switch and the connector separated from the battery cells on the bottom so it's actually two metal boxes this is actually built like a tank which is a good thing so now let's put everything back together and I'm gonna put the battery to the test I'm gonna put this battery on my e-bike and electric scooter but the connector on this one is a SB50 and ring terminal the connector on my e-bike is XT60 so I made a little adapter cable which has XT60 on one end and on the other end I bent the wire this is solid copper wire and then made a little ring here so I can uh, use my screw and mount it on like so so here's my 48 volt e-bike which I'm gonna use to test this battery I made a wooden tray on the back here 
so that I can put the battery on and use my luggage strap to strap it in securely. Inside my battery box where it used to be my cobalt batteries it's going to be empty and I made a hole so that I can run the wire from the inside out of the box to the back here so I can connect it to the big battery battery. Let's put the battery on. So here the battery sits inside my wooden rack here and it's about an inch and a half deep. So that will keep the battery in place and prevent it from sliding everywhere. And then this luggage strap here straps it securely onto the rack. It is very tight and it's not going anywhere. So here's the power cable with the SB50 connector connected to my homemade adapter here with XT60 connector on the other side and it is connected to the uh, wire that goes to my controller inside the battery box. I also installed a capacity meter that is connected in line with the battery to measure exactly how much capacity we get from this battery for this test. All right, I'm on a bike trail right now, ready to go. Got my cruise control ready. This is uh, the odometer, it's gonna measure the speed and the distance. I got a GoPro here and now a GoPro here. Ready to go. My odometer shows two and a half miles right now, so after the test, I'll take the total number minus two and a half. I get the total distance traveled. All right, here we go. It has good acceleration. Check that out. 24 mile per hour. 26. 27. I'm flat out. 28 29 oh my god Woo! I am maxed out 29.6 miles per hour 30 miles per hour oh my god Oh, the power cuts out. No more. My bike controller just cut out power. And let's see what we got here. My uh, odometer 17.86. So we've gone about a little bit over 15 miles. And my battery voltage is 41.1 volts. So that's exactly where my my controller cuts out power however I can push my controller to go a little bit further by riding a little bit slower so here we are I'm right back to where I'm started and my odometer says 18.78 miles so we started at two and a half so that's 
a little bit over 16 miles the power was cut by my controller about one and a half miles ago and I was able to just turn it off and turn it back on and went real slow and uh, went on turtle mode for about one and a half mile and it finally got out right where I started and the battery voltage right now 40.9 volts so that's right on the uh, cut off voltage of my controller and let's see what it says here on my capacity meter 8.539 amp hour and because my controller cuts out at 41 volts the battery still has about 20 percent left and 20 percent is about 2 amp hour so if you add 2 amp hour to 8 and a half we got almost 11 amp hour so that's right on the rated capacity of this battery let's charge the battery back up again charging at 3 amps it's been about 4 hours and the battery is at 50 volts which is full so for the next test I'm going to put it on my Swagtron Swagger 5 electric scooter I have modified this scooter uh, with a new controller so that it can accept any battery up to 60 volts so this battery should work fine and I also modified this scooter to have an external battery mount here and I can mount any external battery up to 60 volts this is the power cable that goes to the controller so all I have to do is to plug this to this this battery is going to be sitting right here and I'm just going to use my bungee cord to secure it together let's put it on and I've got one bungee cord here one here all mount to my battery mount and it is very secure I'm grabbing the battery and I can move the entire scooter it looks a bit hideous but it works and because this battery is way too big I cannot fold this scooter anymore let's turn it on 50.3 volts and all right I'm ready to go and start seats so that will make me more comfortable because this is going to be a long ride update I'm in the middle of nowhere and my odometer 21.9 miles started at 12.2 so almost 10 miles and guess what a flat tire completely flat and right now I don't have a pump I don't have a spare tire I don't have anything in the middle of nowhere I had to walk my scooter for another mile to a public road and then I called my wife so she can come pick me up and this was what she said when she arrived Ruin my uh, working day man Ruin her day, I ruined her day <laughs> Here we go again, day 2 Got everything hooked up and ready New tire, battery is fully charged new seat and most importantly cruise control right let's reset my odometer to zero there we go all right here we go let's do a speed test twelve fifteen seventeen eighteen it's fast twenty 
one, twenty two, twenty two point six, twenty two point six miles per hour maximum. That's pretty fast. I think my controller's cut out. We're at 19.8 miles. Let's see what's going on on this battery. 40.4 volts. All right, we are officially cut off power now. Battery voltage, 40 volts. And we have gone 20 and a half miles. So I was actually able to go on turtle mode for almost a mile. All right, let's charge it back up for the next test. This time I'm gonna use my capacity meter to determine how much capacity is being put into the battery. So in my previous test with my e-bike, it was a discharge capacity test. This time it is a charge capacity test. Right now the battery is at 40.1 volts. It's not completely empty yet. Take 40 divided by 12. We got 3.34 volts per cell. And this time I'm gonna charge it up to 50.4 volts. And that is exactly 4.2 volts per cell. Let's turn it on. And increase the charging current to maximum which is 3 amps all right it's been about four hours and I think it's done on the charger so it's 0.2 amp charging current but on my capacity meter it's down to zero so it's pretty much done the battery voltage is at 50 volts so it's full now take a look at the capacity meter we've got 10 amp hour or 443 watt hour that has been put into this battery uh, the battery is ready at 500 watt hour half a kilowatt hour so 443 watt hour is very close and we have to remember that we didn't charge the battery from zero there was some residual power left from the battery, probably between 10 to 20 percent, plus the amount that's being charged into the battery, which is 400, almost 450 watt hour. So that's about 90 percent of power that's being charged into the battery, plus 10 percent uh, the residual power. So the rating on this battery is right on. So another way to use this battery is for an off-grid system or uh, in an RV. On this case, I'm putting it in my van. I have a 327 watt solar panel on the roof of my van. And over here, I have a charge controller and also a 48 volt outback pure sine wave inverter. I'm using alligator clips to connect everything together just for temporarily to show you how this works. So this controller is a programmable controller and it can charge multiple voltages and different kinds of battery also. So right now it's float charging the battery because the battery is full and it's at 50 volts right now. So this battery is perfect for a camper van like this because it's small and it's portable and it's very easy to set up. For the uh, conclusion part of the video, I want to talk about the pros and cons of this battery instead. The pros, 
It has a good discharge rate and good discharge capacity. The actual testing capacity is exactly as described. It's very well built. It's built like a tank. And because of that, here's the cons. It's a bit big and bulky in my opinion. Not a bad thing really, because the battery inside is well protected. The things I find very useful are the disconnect switch and the battery voltage display. And again, this battery is provided to me by BigBattery.com. I have an affiliation with the website and a coupon discount code. So if you're interested in purchasing the battery or any other products from BigBattery.com, you can use the coupon discount code provided in the description. I'll receive a small commission from BigBattery.com when you use these links and coupon codes. So you receive a discount and at the same time support my channel so I can continue making review videos like this one. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.